Hello everyone. Today let us discuss on fluid Warshall algorithm. This algorithm is used for finding the shortest path between all the pairs of vertices in a weighted graph. What is a weighted graph? A weighted graph is a graph in which each edge has a numerical value associated with it. This algorithm works for both the directed and undirected weighted graphs. This algorithm is also called Floyd's algorithm, Roy Floyd algorithm, Roy Warshall algorithm and so on. And this algorithm is different from Dijkstra's algorithm. This is because in Dijkstra's algorithm, we compute the shortest path from a source vertex to every other vertex, vertices. Whereas in this algorithm, we could find all the shortest paths between every pair of vertices. Floyd Warshall algorithm was proposed by Robert Floyd and Stephen Warshall in the year 1962. Now let us see an example. As I said, this algorithm is applicable for both directed and undirected weighted graphs. So here we can see the edge 3, 5 is directed weighted edge, while the rest of the edges are undirected. So in this example, first of all, we have to compute the distance matrix and the vertex sequence matrix. The distance matrix is denoted by dk and it is an n by n matrix where n is nothing but the number of the vertices. Here we have 5 vertices, therefore the matrix is 5 by 5. And vertex sequence matrix is denoted by sk where k denotes the number of iteration which we will be seeing the, uh, in the following sessions. And here each entry in the distance matrix is denoted by dij and each entries in this vertex sequence matrix is denoted by sij. So here we can see in the distance matrix the first row and the first column is nothing but the vertices 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Now we leave all the diagonal entries as empty. Whereas other entries are entered in such a manner from the graph. So here as we can see from the graph the weighted edge between 1 and 2 is 3. Hence the D1, 2 will be entered 3. Now the weighted edge between the vertices 1 and 3 is weighted 6. Therefore D13 is entered 6. Now D14 is entered infinity. This is because there is no weighted edge between 1 and 4. And also the Entry D15 is also entered infinity since there is no weighted edge between 1 and 5. In this manner, we enter all the entries. Now, as we know, there is a directed weighted edge from 3 to 5. So, we enter the entry 3 D35 as 10. Whereas, D53 is entered infinity. This is because there is no directed edge from 5. To 3. Now correspondingly we have to enter all the entries to the vertex sequence matrix. Here the, uh, we give the first row as the uh, vertices 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and the first column is also given as the vertices 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as distance matrix itself. Then we leave all the diagonal entries empty. And all the other entries are entered as such. Like 2 is entered here, 3 is entered here, 4 is entered here, 5 is entered here. Similarly, 1 is entered here, 2, two there is empty and 3 is entered here, 4 is entered here, 5 is entered here. Like that we enter all the entries. So this is our initial iteration. Now in order to have the next iteration we have to check a condition that is dik plus dkj is less than dig. So we have to check whether dik plus dkj is less than dig where 
K represents the kth iteration. And here we should know that I is not equal to K and J should not be equal to K and I should not be equal to J. We will be seeing this in this table. Where also that Dij represents the entries of distance matrix D0 or Dk. So here where we have to list all the combinations. So here we go for the next iteration. So it will be K kth iteration and this k is equal to 1 so we go for the first iteration so here k is equal to 1 and k is written as 1 and if we take i i should not be equal to k therefore i should not be 1 but it can be 2 now taking for j j cannot be i or k therefore it can be the other than the number other than i and k here k is 1 and i is 2 therefore j is taken as 3 and to take this entry it is nothing but dij here i is 2 and j is 3 therefore we take d2 3 similarly we find all such combinations and we compute the sum of dik plus dkj in the left column and the entries dij in the right column so we can compute this from the distance matrix d21 is nothing but 3 and d13 is 6 therefore d21 plus 1 t13 is equal to 9 now d23 is nothing but infinity therefore d23 is infinity now d21 plus d14 d21 is 3 and d14 is infinity therefore 3 plus infinity is infinity now d24 is nothing but 4 therefore d24 is entered 4 like this we compute for all and we see that only for these two cases these conditions are satisfied for the rest of them the conditions are violated since infinity is not less than 4 and infinity is not less than infinity like that the rest so this is how we check for the condition for the next iteration thus we go that the entries d23 and d32 the condition is satisfied and hence for d23 and d32 we replace the minimum value which is 9 while the rest of the values are retained as such Here in D1, we can see that D23 and D32 is re-entered as 9 whereas all the other values retained as such. Now correspondingly in vertex sequence matrix, we have to enter the S2 third and S3 tooth value as the value of K where K is equal to 1 k is equal to 1 therefore 1 is entered in these two positions where the conditions were satisfied now we continue this process and we compute for k equal to 2 which is d2 and s2 and we also compute for d k equal to 3 and that is d3 and s3 and we also compute for k equal to 4 d4 and s4 and at last we compute for k equal to 5 that is d5 and s5 Therefore, there are 5 iterations where the number 5 represents the number of vertices. So, when k is equal to n plus 1, we can stop the iteration. But here we can see that we can already stop the iteration at the 4th stage. Since all the entries in 4th stage are similar in the 5th stage. But actually we have to stop the iteration when k is equal to n plus 1. Now from these matrices we can find the shortest distance as well as the shortest path. Let us see how it is. So the shortest distance can be found from the distance matrix. In distance matrix the shortest distance between 1 and 5 is nothing but the entry D15 that is 16. Therefore the shortest distance between 1 and 5 is 16. So now in order to find the shortest path we can find it from the C 
sequence vertex sequence matrix. Let us see how it is. So in order to find the shortest path, we have to take the vertex sequence matrix and we have to stop when SIK is equal to K. Consider we have to find the shortest path between 1 and 3. Here S13 is equal to 3 that is SIK is equal to K. Therefore we could stop and we can say that the shortest path between 1 and 3 is nothing but the edge 1 3 itself. Now let us find the shortest path for 1 and 5. Here S15 is not equal to 5 rather than it is 3. So here we have to go for 3 and we get that S13 is 3. Therefore the shortest path will be 1, 3 and 5. So it is the shortest path between 1 and 5 is 1, 3, 5. This is how we find the shortest path and shortest distance between any pair of vertices. Like this we can find the shortest path and shortest vertices, sorry shortest distance between any pair of vertices. The major drawbacks of uh, this algorithm is that it is quite complex and can be difficult to understand and also that this algorithm can be slow when used on large graphs and it does not work for the graphs with negative cycles where the sum of the edges in a cycle is negative. Thank you for watching. Thank you all.